I was diagnosed in 2006 with uh, multiple sclerosis. I kind of had a couple bad days of um, not feeling right, had some uh, lightheadedness, had some uh, off balance type things. Uh, it just kind of felt like I had a cold. Wasn't really sure what was going on. So I went to bed uh, that day, got up uh, the next morning. We were supposed to go on a trip. And I just, I told my wife, I said, I can't drive. Something isn't right. So uh, that day, the following day, I stayed in bed. She came in and asked me the next day, how are you doing? And I said, well, you have four eyes. I said, your mouth is separated. And the lights on the, on the ceiling up there on the fan are all separated. So something was wrong. So we went to emergency um, the following day. Uh, this hospital wasn't uh, technologically advanced, I guess. They weren't able to really do much for me. So I went uh, the following day for an MRI um, at Kaiser Hospital. And uh, within, uh, this was four days, um, I had my actual diagnosis of MS. And for me, I'm an optimistic person. Um, I mean, the doctor came straight out and said, you have MS. It about uh, I think, you know, for my wife, it about dropped her to her knees. It was hard information for her to, to hear. For me, it was, okay, I have it, what do I do? You know, so I wanted to just start doing things right away for this. I started on the Capaxone shots. Um, anybody that's here for MS, um, that's here listening for this, uh, I mean, you guys are, <laughs> this is the place to be. You're in for a treat. Uh, you're going to hear some incredible stories besides mine. But so I started all this stuff, you know, right away. I started my Copaxone shots. Um, right after I started doing the shots, uh, very rapidly, uh, my condition started to progress with uh, just severe fatigue. And anybody who hasn't experienced this, and I think only 50% of MS patients will experience fatigue. And, and of those, uh, you know, not a whole lot of them get the severe fatigue like I had. So this actually, this got worse and worse. Luckily, it was, I'm self-employed. It was easy for me to be able to handle this stuff, but this was for the next three years that this went on. And for three years, on a daily basis, laid up on the couch, no energy. I mean, to get, I couldn't accomplish anything. It was, it's that hard for me to even, you know, just get up and get ready for the day. By the time I would do that, I was done. So to try and tell anybody how you feel, they just say, take a nap. It doesn't work. And, and you can't explain anybody to anybody how fatigued you are at that time. So this went on for three years. I'd been through all kinds of medications. I'd been through, uh, I mean, all, uh, the Copaxone shots for the EMS, but I'd also been for energy, uh, um, everything from uh, Prozac, which is also used for energy, um, to Amantadine. I finally ended up telling my doctors nothing's working for me. I ended up on um, uh, Ritalin, which, I mean, that's bad stuff. That's not good for your body. So, I mean, here I am taking Ritalin, and Ritalin would absolutely just about do nothing for me, maybe help keep me a little bit level, and, and that was it. So, I, you know, I had no other choice but to take this stuff. And uh, lo and behold, a friend of the family, um, uh, somebody that my mom knows, um, turns out that Holly Huber, uh, a good friend of mine now, is how I found out about the stem cell treatment. Um, being that she's a friend of the family, this was something that I could really trust. It wasn't something that was just, you know, I was told about and to go try and, and check this out. So, it, you know, the validity was there more for me um, when I heard this story. So I looked into Holly's story. I heard her story. I spoke to her. Um, you know, she devoted an hour of time to me, told me everything about her stem cell treatment. Um, I did my research also and looking into this stuff, looking into the clinics and finding out more about it um, to where I felt comfortable with it. Um, but I didn't waste any time. I said, you know, nothing's gonna help me 
uh, it's not going to get any better. It's only going to progress for me. So I made my appointment right away and uh, went down to the stem cell clinic in Costa Rica. And the doctors are fantastic. I mean, and I know it's in Panama now, but it's the same there. The doctors were fantastic. The facilities are fantastic. I mean, as good as any that I've been to over here in the United States. Um, just, you know, to, to tell people what you've been through. This is one of those things in life where when, when you come across something, no matter what it is, you're going to come across something in your life that you find out it's so good or so cool or it works really good here and you just want to tell everybody about it. That's where I'm at now with the stem cell treatment because, uh, you know, I was there for two weeks for the, for the treatment. Um, my nurses were just fantastic. The doctors were great. But when I went through uh, the, uh, the, um, the first part of the treatment for the uh, liposuction that I had, I had that done. I went back and I got my first injection. Um, no problems. The second injection I did, and I had a couple days. I had the weekend to recover after that. And I went back for my third injection. And this, this was the spinal. And I, I told the doctor, I said, you know what? I said, I haven't had fatigue in the past three days, which was very abnormal for me. I mean, I, I was fatigued every single day. And he said, you know, it, it's stuff starting to work. It's, you know, they're reducing inflammation, which might be causing my symptom. I said, whatever. I don't care what it is. It's working. So after that second injection and going back in for my third, I decided and made my own decision to stop all medications. And this is after, before I went for, for treatment, telling my doctor about this. My doctor's response to the treatment was, she said, don't believe everything you see or read on the internet. And I said, well, I didn't just read or see this on the internet. You know, I have a close friend that went through this procedure and the results were fantastic. Cold shoulder is pretty much all I got from my doctor. So I didn't even go back and talk to her anymore. I just, uh, in fact, that, that response was from an email that she sent me. So I just went ahead and said, well, I don't need to talk to you anymore about it. In fact, this was my second neurologist who, who verified um, that I do have MS. So uh, I just went ahead with the procedure, came back, and it was probably six, seven months um, until I actually went to see my doctor again. And so I went back and I, and I told her about it, and uh, I still got the cold shoulder. I mean, it was just, I could not believe it. We walked out of there, and I, and I told her, I said, I am doing fantastic. I said, my energy is back. I said, I'm a, I'm, I feel 100%. I don't have any limitations. And she just really didn't want to hear much about it. My wife and I actually walked out of there. She actually started discounting my symptoms, saying, well, you weren't very bad when you came in here in the first place. Maybe I wasn't, but you diagnosed me a second time correctly with MS. So I, we walked out of there just going, did you feel the same way? I asked my wife, I said, do you feel that she's kind of saying I don't have MS? And she said, yeah, I kind of felt the same way. And I thought, you know what, whatever. She doesn't know anything about this. So uh, next weekend, next Sunday, is five years since my diagnosis. I'm on, right now, uh, this coming July 4th, it's uh, July 4th is when I got back from my treatment. It's Independence Day, more ways than one, you know, uh, now for me. So it's that much more special. But um, this 4th of July will be two years since I've been back from my treatment. And um, I mean, I am, I'm 100%. I go, for, I go for runs three to four times a week three mile runs. I run about nine and a half minute miles. I mean, very respectable times for running. And I just, I can't, I, I, to me, it just blows me away. So we go back, I went back beginning of September for a follow-up MRI. She said, yeah, you need to come in and do a follow-up MRI. So I did that. 
she didn't, or it was actually the beginning of August, uh, she didn't get me in to see the results until almost the end of September. It wasn't any big rush for her, as, and I'm sitting there just going, what are the results? What are the results? I want to know what's happened. So we finally get in there, and I brought my wife along for help again, you know, just as, as some support. And we go, over the, we go over the MRIs, and we're looking at it, and she says, well... She says, you, you appear to be doing well. You haven't progressed at all. Okay. You don't seem to be very into it, you know. So we had to pry answers out of her. My wife was sitting there just saying, okay, he hasn't progressed. But if you take a typical RRMS patient, me, and this, this patient doesn't have any medication for the past year and a half, Will that patient progress? And she was real quiet. And we're just staring at her, and she finally says, yes, the patients will progress. And we're saying, okay, thank you. <laughs> I haven't progressed, okay? So are you starting to see something of what's happening here with the stem cell success? And she still, you know, she just doesn't want to answer any questions. So we'd look at the MRI together, and she says, yes, your MRI shows no, uh, no new lesions. You have not progressed. And she actually looks at it and says, this spot here has actually diminished a bit. So at that time, you know, I mean, my wife and I are just sitting there going, so why are you not standing up and just saying, my God, this stuff works. She doesn't, she still doesn't understand this stuff. She's starting to raise an eyebrow to it now when she sees me. And so, you know, hopefully the, the more we go on with this and we start showing our doctors what can be done with this, they're gonna learn. Now she did, I have to give her credit, she, she recommended for me, uh, Ludian, Ludiolin, there's a lot of, there's some different names for it. Um, she said, look into that. She said, it's a, it's a natural anti-inflammatory. So I have, I've looked into it and I've started taking a product called Ludimax. I did my own research on it. It's one that has the most amount of this uh, Ludiolin in it. Um, and I've been taking it and I mean, I can use all the anti-inflammatory possible. I've got bad allergies. I mean, so anything that's going to do that, uh, you know, keep down the inflammation is going to help me. So I take that, and I can actually feel when I don't take it. I can feel a difference. So I'm doing my part just in taking, just in taking a, a natural supplement. Um, but other than that, no drugs, no, no Capaxone shots, nothing like that. Um, no Ritalin, no harsh chemicals. That's right. That's called Ludimax, L-U-T-I-M-A-X, L-U-T-M-A-X, or L-U-T-I-M-A-X, Ludimax. You. you can find it's, no, 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 it's just over the counter. You can Ludimax.com, you can find it, but the stuff's amazing. I mean, and, and it, it helps to, to do a lot of other things for people too. Um, Look at that on your own, make your own decision. For me, it works. It works good. But back to, back to, my, to my treatment, um, again, you guys see me standing here. I'm in good shape. Before I was diagnosed with MS, before I had my first onset, I was training for L.A. City Fire Department. 37 years of age, I was in the best shape of my life. I'm proud to say that when I did my physical agility test, I spanked the young kids there. I mean, I just, I beat them so bad and I was so proud of it. And I asked one of the guys, I said, where am I at? He said, you're in the top 5% of all the applicants that we have now. And I mean, you have thousands of applicants and I felt really good. I actually did not go into it because I made the decision not to on my own. It wasn't what I needed to do at the time. But one week after that is when I got my diagnosis for, uh, for the MS. I wouldn't have been going into the fire service anyhow. So it didn't make a difference to me, but for this treatment, I mean, just, it's absolutely incredible. And like I said, the people that are here for MS specifically, 
or if you're going back to talk to somebody else about it, this is where you need to be. I, the people I talk to, they say, I'll check it out. Maybe I'll do it in a year or so. I said, don't even wait. You make your appointment and you go do it now because the MS is only going to progress. It's not going to get any better with the Copaxone or whatever other shots you're on. It's not going to do it. And hopefully with my results, the results of others, not only the spinal cord injuries, but the heart patients, everything like that, keep taking this information back to our doctors and we can all work together on getting this here into our country. And uh, again, thank you guys for everything that you do for, for your research. And, and uh, I mean, I feel, I, feel, <laughs> I feel stupid, man. I mean, I can't even begin to, to fathom what you guys do. And, um, but it's, it's a progression for all of us. This, this is gonna be mainstream one of these days, but we just have to get it there. And uh, I'm, I'm here to tell my story to anybody. And you know, it's from the heart. And so thank you guys very much.